Good morning, everybody. How's everyone doing today? Good, good. If you don't mind, let's just give God a real good praise, if that's all right. <laughs> praise the Lord. I, I Let me just go ahead and get my commercial out the way. We got all the way to church, and I got out the car, and I said, where's my jacket? So needless to say, I had to drive all the way back to Elk Grove to get my jacket. And um, Jerry said, yo, you all right? One of the other gentlemen said, oh, you okay? But I just couldn't do it, Elton. I couldn't do it. It's hard enough that I ain't got a tie on, but it's 100 degrees outside. And I'm like, oh, God, help us. But God is good. And, and I had green lights going and coming. I, I, I'm praising him on the inside for that because I have left my house and it's took me 20 minutes to get to the freeway for the green lights and the people not wanting to drive like they had somewhere to get to. But I am indeed grateful to the Lord for being here this morning. I'm, I'm honored that Pastor would ask me to stand in his stead in the pulpit this morning. It is a privilege and an honor to speak to the people of God it is always overwhelming at how God will take one man to speak to a church full of people. And it is only because of his goodness and his mercy that we're allowed to do that. It, it's only because of his grace that we're able to speak to the hearts of men and of women. Y'all hear me all right? Uh, online, how y'all doing? Amen. Put a, put a high five or something in online. Let us see you. I'm going to speak this morning, and the topic is the one who stayed. I'm going to continue in the vein of where Pastor Court has been with the prodigal son, but I'm going to take an unfamiliar path because I'm going to talk about his brother today, the one who stayed. If you will turn in your Bibles to Galatians, Sister Kim is already there. We already, we already worked this out. Amen. But if you will turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 6, and we'll start reading at verse 1. And we're going to go from verse 1 just to 11, so you can put it on the screen if you're capable of doing so. And it reads... Feel the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he re sh then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. Mm -hmm. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Uh -huh. Be not deceived; God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Uh -huh. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Uh -huh. But he that soweth in the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Uh -huh. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Uh -huh. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Ye see how large a letter ha I have written unto you with mine own hand. You can stop right there. Go back, in fact, and let's read verse 10 again. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the household of faith. Father, we love you. We bless you and we thank you for your word, dear God. We rejoice that your word, God, is one who has found great spoil. Lord, I pray today that preaching is easy and hearing is a sweet delight. I ask, God, that you would hide me behind your glory. 
that none of my words are shared here, but God, only that that you've prepared at your table for this, your people. I pray, God, today that the glory of God will be revealed in us, through us, O oh God, and with us, that you get glory out of our lives, God, that we offer our lives a sacrifice to you. God, we will be careful to bless you. We'll be careful to thank you for all things. And if you agree, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Let's go ahead. Are we on the screen with those scriptures? If so, let's go back. Brethren and sister, if someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual, restore such a one. I, I'm, I'm going to give you a break here and, and, and just give some instruction. You know, all the time we tell you, look at your neighbor and say, well, in truth, I was thinking about this. It would be crazy for us to tell you to tell yourself. So we tell you to tell your neighbor, but really we're telling you to tell yourself. But to keep us from looking like we'd lost our minds, we look at somebody and we tell them. But in actuality, we're really talking to ourselves. So when I say, look at Jerry, prophet, you're really talking to yourself. It's not Jerry you're talking to. And so when we see this scripture, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, help somebody. Help, help, help somebody. Help, help. Somebody, help somebody, help somebody that, that they, they may not be where you are or where you actually think you are. Because the Bible just said, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. And some, oftentimes we put ourselves on a pedestal, mother, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm better than this one. And this one ran off and did this and did that and did the other. But really in all actuality, what God is telling us through this scripture right here is that you really should not think of yourselves more highly than what you really are. Because oftentimes with us what happens is we think we're at a certain spot in life and in Jesus. Forget life. We think we're at a certain spot, elder, in God until they cut you off on the freeway. I, I'm not going to get it, amen, because I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm, 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 I'm guilty. Until they tell you that you did something that you know you didn't do. Until your child bucks up against you and you're like, oh, God, I forgot that was in me. Until on the job, somebody start gossiping about you. And then, and, and Jay, we gonna, who you think you're talking to? And then God says, see, I had to allow this to happen in your life so I could show you the real you. Have you ever had a situation that you had to deal with when you really began to question your own self? I didn't know that was in me. I, I know, just keep your head down and don't raise your hand and don't say nothing because I'm just going to mirror this. I'm just talking about me. I'm not talking about you. Where they get on your last nerve and, and a hallelujah ain't what you want to say to them. When a, when a praise the Lord ain't what you want to come out your mouth. But in all actuality, God is showing you who you really are. And he's saying there's more of me than you need. There's something behind your hallelujah. There's something behind your speaking in tongues that I want to get to. He says, because when you become spiritual, you can restore the one who, who is struggling to get back in. But until we understand who we really are, be, be, be beyond my title. Beyond my position, beyond what you call me, there's a person that God wants to get to and he wants to scrub all of that ugly out of us. How many of you have ever been on a fast before and after maybe the third day of, of real, I'm not talking about that, that, that six in the morning to 12 in the afternoon fast we do. Missionary Young, I'm talking about that one from old school Kojic when they didn't give you nothing for three days and then for another three days you had to drink water and then for another three days you had to drink juice. You couldn't eat no, they call them fancy foods. You couldn't do none of that until we got these mad scientists in the kitchen. Well, it ain't meat, but it's everything but meat, so I ain't really fasting. I'm trying to get around the fact that I can't eat meat. I'm that kind of fast. But I said that to say this. Have you ever fasted that long till you got pimples in your face? Your body started excreting a, 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 a certain odor. It's like, oh, something, something ain't right. Because now your body is pushing out toxins. Of, 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 of McDonald's and, and Chick-fil-A and Mama's Fried Chicken. It's pushing out all of those toxins that, that we have been putting in our body.
body day in and day out and all of a sudden something starts changing from the inside and I'm here to tell you that there's something going on in the lives of believers and God is starting to push that stuff out of us and we wonder why is all hell breaking loose because God is saying I'm pushing some stuff out of you and we're looking over here and we're looking over there and we're looking at this one and we're looking at that one and God is saying no it's you that I'm dealing with. You know we walk in church. We don't, we don't say it and we don't carry no banner. But we want our pop and circumstance when we come into church. You better acknowledge who I am. I ain't, I ain't going to get an amen, but it's still good. It's still true and it's still right. You, 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 you didn't invite me? The nerve of you. Why, why wasn't my name called? And God said, I'm, I'm trying to show you that you're thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to. You know, your, your mama would tell you growing up, oh, you, you, you feel a particular way. And, and she would tell you, well, so I, I, I didn't grow up with a father, so I can only have a mother's reference. Slow down because you're smelling yourself. Because that meant you about to get in some trouble. That meant that, that you don't overstep the boundary and entered into a no trespassing zone where there may not be any safety for you because see, as long as you stay in your place, there's safety for you. But the minute you get out of line, see, I, I, I'm, I'm 58. I'm, I, Lord, let me live to see December. I'll be 59. That means that'll be my last year in these 50s. Oh, I ain't trying to hold on to it. I'm trying to get further on because in the last two years, we done lost so many folk. I told him, Brother Derek, I said, look, if Jesus don't hurry up and come back, he can come back in the minivan because ain't going to be nobody left. So I'm, I'm trying to make it that far. But I said that to say there was a time when we went to the store and your mom, don't touch nothing. Don't look at nothing. And if you act a fool, I'm going to beat you right where you act a fool at. Now we have to have, uh, 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 would you please stop? We were in the store and this little boy, oh, he was acting a complete fool. I want the candy. I want the candy. I... John, please stop. But my mama... Mary Louise, look, I would have got it so bad that the next time I saw Candy Deanna, no, no thank you, because I remember what happened the last time. And there are some of us who we, we come to church and we sit at home and we have temper tantrums week in and week out. God, is my turn. And God is saying, just, just be still because you, you're asking for something that you're not ready for. Have you, have, have you ever wanted something that you did not have the capability of holding on to? Oh, I want this car, but I, I, can't, I, I can't afford the car. And I can't afford, if I pay the car note, I can't pay the insurance. And now with gas being sky high, I can only afford to go to the gas station and go back home. Because we, we have to learn how to count up the cost. And so he's admonishing us here in Galatians, the sixth chapter, that we have to do a self-examination. And you know what the problem with that is, Kim, is because we can examine everybody but me. I can tell you what's wrong with Jerry. I can tell you what's wrong with Prev. I could tell you what's wrong with, 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 with Big D. I could tell you what's wrong with Elder Court, Court but let it come to me. Well, I, I, I'm doing everything right, but wait a minute. I, I, just, I just done put down four of the brothers who are pillars in my life only to lift myself up knowing that if I chip them away, that when my storm comes, what is there to hold me up? We are around here thinking I'm better than you. No, I need you. I got, I got a bad left leg, and it's messing with everything. My right leg, I'm, I, I messed my left ankle up on the ship because my right knee was already messed up. So I walk with a slight limp. But at the end of the day, even though the pain is over here on this side, it affects my entire body. In the days I use my cane, then that means my left shoulder is going to hurt. Elton, some nights I can't wait to just lay in the bed because of all that I've gone through in that day. And the same is true for some of us spiritually. 
We ain't telling nobody we in pain. We're not talking to anybody about, about our problems. Because we're not secure that the one who is supposed to be spiritual can get us out of where we are. And that's an indictment against the church that I can't go to my brother or to my sister and say I need prayer and it not be across all the Sacramento by the time I lay my head on my pillow. I need to know that you got my back, Jay, when I tell you to pray. It's not for you to pray on me. It's to pray for me. And many of us have misconstrued that. And here he says, you who are spiritual, not heady and high-minded, not think you know everything, but you who, are, who know how to pray. I, I didn't meet Dad Doyle and Mom Doyle, but I guarantee you, if I were to have a conversation with you, your son or your brother, you could tell, or any of those of you who were here, they had a prayer language, and when it changed gears, you knew something was up. Am I right about it? If I'm telling me I'm wrong, I'll shut up. Yeah. Clarissa had a mama that had a prayer language. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to do it here, and I promise you, you'll never hear it again. But she would get in prayer, and you know she had this high-pitched, she had one of those. But then when she got down to that, you knew, wait, wait, hold back up. Because whatever it was that was on you. That prayer language that connected her to God was going to break that thing off of you. That's why the Bible tells us to call for those who know how to pray. Not those who know how to talk. Not those that know how to counsel. Not those that know how to sing you through. He says call for the praying people. Call for the praying women. Call for those who know how to mourn in Zion. Who know how to get a prayer through. We coming in here bartering with God, talking with God. Well, Lord, if you work it out, no, baby, we're getting ready to have a shut in. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be funny, but Pastor Court, I don't know if it's going to be one of them that we used to now, where we bring textbooks and pillows and blankets and all that other stuff. But I remember a day when we used to come to prayer, Jerry, and that's all we did. I think I told y'all I got saved out of the Catholic Church. So you really can't talk to me a whole lot about Catholicism. I can, t I can school you on that because I grew up in it. So when I did come over here to the Pentecostal church, in my first experience with a shut-in, D, I said, they're going to do that all night? When we going to sleep? I, was, I, I, I didn't know what I was in for. But then some years later, I was ready to do it like I was taught but then when I was called to the, to the shut-in, we were having breakout sessions. We were having conversations with each other. But there should have been a conversation that went this way. Because I promise you, we can talk this way, Brother Calvin, all day long. But until we learn how to start talking this way, it ain't nothing going to change. No yokes are going to be broken with me just telling you about my problem. It's going to be broken when you who are spiritual can lay holy hands on me and break that thing off of me. Because there was a time that we came to church and those that came in one way left another way. We weren't in a rush to get out by 1045 so we could be first in line at all you can eat. We weren't in a rush to get out of church because we knew that if we stayed in his presence... That yokes would be destroyed. That lives would be changed. We, 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 uh, we don't even tarry on the altar no more. In fact, I heard a preacher say something that was extremely disturbing. He said, oh, y'all can pray all night if you want to. That's not required anymore. That's only required for people who don't want more of God. But you know what the problem with that really is? Is that God has given us so much. Kim, he's given us so much, we ain't got to pray about nothing no more. If we're sick, we take a pill. If we're hungry, we go to the deep freezer. If it's a problem, don't, don't come with, to me with it. I don't want to hear it because you're talking negative. No, I'm telling you the truth. But God is bringing his church to a place. We, we are going to need him like never before. I'm, I'm not going to preach politics. That ain't my thing. But this whole Roe v. Wade thing, it ain't about spiritualism. It's about control, baby. I'm going to say that, and I'm going to leave it alone. 
It ain't, it ain't about us loving God no more than we've loved him. It's about taking control. Because if it was really about the kingdom, we would preach abstinence and holiness. Mother Ellen, did, did, did y'all teach us it was holiness or hell? Now it's come as you are, stay as you say how you like. Oh, don't mess with them. No, because when you live holy, it'll make the folk either want to get away from you or it will draw them closer to you. And knowing that it's drawing them closer to you, they know I got to do more to be like D. I can't stay like I am because I see something on her. It's, it's, it's not judgmental. It's, it's not condescending. It's something that draws. See, that's the thing about the Holy Ghost. He's never been one that has been condescending. But he, he says with loving kindness. Have I drawn you? So we're going to see some folk come through these doors. And the litmus test will be, will they stay and remain? Or will they come one service and leave because they didn't see love or power? They're gonna, they, Big D, they're going to come in. We prayed and asked God to send them. But are we ready to receive them? We, we, got, we do the COVID check at the door. Praise God for that. Because I got COVID at church. If they had had a check, I might not have gotten it. That's just a side note, but anyway. But, we, we, but, but what we're doing, we're doing closed checks at the door. Oh, that's too short. That's too tight. That's too loose. Pants too low. But God is saying, if you bring them in, and they see what real men look like. They see what Brother Jerry looked like with his pants pulled up. They see what Brother Prev looked like with his pants pulled up. They'll see what this sister looks like with her clothes that, that, that don't show her everything. I want to be like that. And our loving kindness draws them in. It'll be a change. I, I, saw, I saw the vision of the citadel. But before the citadel is ever built... Our hearts are going to have to change toward God. Because guess what? Even though it's for us, it ain't for us. I, I, I only hear Kim and Mama, uh, amen, and then that's cool. Because I could have stayed home and preached this to myself. But Vanessa, until we change, oh, they can come in like ha uh, herding cattle. But they won't stay because they have not experienced the love of God. Have you ever met somebody and they, you just, you just, ooh, something about them? And the, 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 the problem is because they're dealing from a fleshly level, only their lust can identify with the feeling. It's not until they get the Holy Ghost and not until they understand through the Holy Ghost what that, what that admiration really is. Ooh, Kim, is something about you. It's the Holy Ghost. Ooh, Clarissa, it's something about you. I see them pretty lips and all that other, but it's something about you. What draws me to you? It's the Holy Ghost that you see. When, when, when Sister Juanita was preaching last week, she walked by and, and said, Oh, Brother Wade, smells God. I said, either it's too loud, but Lord, I thank you. And I try to make it a habit and not a coincidence because I don't want none of y'all, none of y'all walk around and talk about, don't want to stand by him. But that's the way the Holy Ghost is. He has an aroma, hallelujah, to him. That draws. I, I, I was telling Pastor Court a couple of weeks ago. I said, "Man, I, I, I don't never met your granddaddy, but oh, I saw him today. I saw him today because see, it's not about how much you you you, you study." It's about what's down on the inside of you. Hallelujah. And when that man got up and preached, it wasn't about the time he spent reading his Bible. It was about the time he spent a long time ago praying with someone who knew how to get a breakthrough. I'm going to have y'all out of here real soon because that was just the introduction. Kim, let's go to, what was it, Luke 16. And again, that was the introduction. Now let's get to the meat of it. Where we at, Luke 16, 15, and 25. If y'all could put that up on the screen, Luke 15 and 25. And it reads, now his elder son was in the field. Uh-huh. And as oh, he... Whoa, whoa, stop, 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 stop. Let me just give you a backstory. Y'all, y'all, Pastor Court has been preaching on the prodigal son. 
So the son has taken all of what belongs to him, went out, and, and one scripture says he hoarded it away. He, he, he lived a lavish life. He spent all of that money. It took him several days to, to gather. I can go to one bank and get all my money, and I can do that in 15 minutes. But the scripture says that he took several days, gathered up everything that his father said belonged to him, and he took off. He went to a far land. Now, I, I, I know y'all, by a show of hands, who does not know the story of, of, of the, the prodigal son? Who does not know the story? Okay, I'm going to, uh, one of our, look around, um, Elder. She raised her hand. And so my elder here, he's going to go over that with you. Amen. Now, but for those of you that do know, and I'm going to go try to help you, there was a father, had two sons. And one of his younger sons told his daddy, Daddy, I want all the stuff that belongs to me, my inheritance. I want it right now. I'm tired of living under your roof. I'm ready to go do my own thing. So his daddy took a couple of days, and he separated all that was the older brother's and all that was the younger brothers. Gave the younger brother his stuff. And he went out. Part, he went to Vegas. He went to Vegas with his money. He was buying prostitutes, gambling, alcohol, and partying. Now his daddy was rich. They lived in a nice home. They had servants that worked with, alongside them, and servants that worked for you. I'll do it for you, Calvin. Don't worry, worry, worry about it. We got a few minutes. So this son took all his stuff, went to Vegas. And after he blew all his money, one of the casino owners said, look, you spend a whole lot of money with us. I ain't going to give you no perks. You ain't going to get no free hotel rooms. But what you can do is go down to the basement. You could either work in the laundry or in the kitchen. And people that don't eat all the food off their plate, you can have their leftovers. Basically is what he said. So he was eating with, 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 with the pigs. And this boy, he, he had an epiphany. Because the word of God says when he came to himself, that's powerful by itself. That'll preach all day long by itself. But we're going to put a pin right there. So then he decided, I'm going to get up from working with the, with the, with the hotel uh, cleaning committee. I ain't eat nobody's nasty leftover ate on pork chops. I'm going to my daddy's house. So he decided to go home. Now remember, he went to a far land, the Bible says, right? Kim started reading. Did, did, did that kind of help you? Did that kind of give you reference? All right, we good. So now, go ahead. Now his elder son uh -huh. was in the field. Was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, uh -huh. he heard music and dancing. Uh-huh. And he called one of the servants uh -huh. and asked what these things meant. What's, what's going on in daddy's house? And he said unto him. Uh -huh. The servant said to him. Uh -huh. Thy brother is come. Your brother then came back home. And thy father hath killed the fatted calf. And your daddy then set up a party. We've got to have a backyard barbecue. <laughs> because he hath received him safe and he, sound. He, he came home safe and sound. and sound. Stop there for me. Wait a minute. Wait. Too many people have left out the house and didn't make it back. Too many people have left out the house, let that sink in for a minute, yes. and have not made it back. Yes. Be it that death took them, or we ride by and say, ooh, he used to go to the gospel center, now he out here talking to trees. That ain't funny. That's, that, that's not a laughable moment. Because we go by and we see, that person used to be, they sang in the choir with us. We grew up under Elder Doyle together. We grew up under Apostle Sims together. And our self-righteousness, God forgive us. Ooh, I'm, ooh. Ooh. I'm, I'm glad that ain't me. We won't even go to McDonald's and get him a dollar meal and bake, take it back to him. Because many of us, oh, I know it's about to get tight, have that same attitude. But read on, Kim. Read on, read on, read on, read on. And he was angry. <clears throat> Wait a minute. <laughs> My baby brother then went out here and acted a whole fool. And rather than me being happy when he came home, I'm mad about it. Uh -huh. yeah. 
How many of us have aughts against our brothers and sisters? Not because of something that they did to us, but something that they did that we were probably afraid to do. You, you know how we vicariously live now through Tyler Perry? Oh, God help us. You, you, you know how some of the stuff we scared to do we watch on TV? Just look down. Don't, I'm not asking nobody nothing. I know when I talked about it some t- last time, y'all looked at me like I was crazy. Knowing good and doggone well, you knew exactly what I was talking about. You know how you, 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 you vicariously live through housewives that ain't really married and all this other debauchery we got on TV now? I raised my own hand. I'm guilty. I, I'll say it for myself. I, yeah, ain't nobody else in here guilty. I'm just, Elton, I'm just talking to me. I'm, I'm the only one in here that watch certain TV shows. I'm the only one here that do it. I know I am. God forgive me. Help me. Because cause I, 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 got, I got a fire stick, and I can go home and watch it a day before. But I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, 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 we've, I'm just talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else. I know ain't none of y'all. I, now, this part I don't. I ain't got no books. I gotta, I gotta, well, y'all got them, too. You got tablets. You ain't got to go out and get no books no more. You got tablets now. And, and he's upset that his brother came home. Read. And he was angry uh-huh. and would not go in. Wouldn't go in. Therefore, I ain't going back to church. They got all that stuff going over there now. It ain't like it used to be. We ain't doing what we used to do. Uh-huh. We singing different kind of music. Oh, I'm going to say it because he let me up here. I'm not going back <laughs> over there. It ain't the same no more. They don't dress like we used to dress. They don't act like we used to dress, like we used to act. But I'm here to tell you God has his finger in your chest. If that has ever been a conversation you had, I'm having it with you today. Come on, come on. Read. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he asked. Whoa, 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 whoa. So now we're doing outreach to Uh (laughs) inreach. Clarissa, they coming knocking at 6405. Why ain't y'all coming to church no more? Come on. Well, I'm just discouraged, Pastor. But you were a pillar in the church. Uh You sang in the choir. You preached in the pulpit. You laid hands on the sick. And now I got to come and ask you, why are you upset? Well, it's not the way I think it should be. Uh I'm just going to get in y'all's business because y'all don't know me and I don't care if you don't like me. They, well, well, Ella, I, I'm not, no disrespect. Ella, I'm, I, don't, I don't go no more because, you know, since Dad Doyle left, it ain't the same no more. Well, baby, you weren't the same. You changed. We didn't. <laughs> Pit a pin in it. We went to a certain place called Gospel Center. I was minding my own business. And a couple of the sister saints couldn't get in the service because they thought I was in here with another woman. Sometimes we pay so much attention to the unnecessary thing. Lisa, we went to Costco, and and my wife is there. I ain't got a reason to lie to you. The woman looked at me and said, cheater. I go to Costco like it's my Disneyland. I go to Costco. We are on a first-name basis, Jerry. And I walked in the store. And the woman who we talked about our vacations and where we're going next and where we've been and what's going on and where she been, we walking through the door. And she look up and she says, cheater. <laughs> but here's the thing. She knew she don't know me, but she knows me. But when she saw something different, it affected her a different way. So Clarissa had to turn around and say, I've lost 118 pounds. It's me. Oh, okay. Now she's all bubbly. But I said that to say this. We are evolving, church. We are liquid, church. We are stable, but we are liquid at the same time. Because the church you see this week may not be the church you see next week. And it is not an indictment of where we've come from, but it's an an assurance of where we're going. I'm going to give myself an offering for that one, doggone it. Read, Kim. 
And he answering said to his father. He said to his daddy. Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Wait, I've been, I've been in, I've been in gospel center since the beginning. Yeah. Read. Neither transgress. I ain't did nothing wrong. I at any time thy commandments. I'd always did what you said. And yet thou never gavest me a kid. Stop. Oh, God help us. Pastor Corton, I've been here all this time, and you mean to tell me you're going to have somebody that just got here preach when you gone? Uh-huh. Come on. Uh-oh. I ain't ever left. Been, been right here. I might be your friend or your family member. That's why I ain't coming back. Because you should have called me when you was going on vacation and let me preach. Pastor Cook, what you mean having a woman preach on, on Father's Day? <laughs> why missionary younger in charge of the service? It's a men's day. Come on. That's why I ain't coming back. Oh, I'm going to put it where the goats can get it. <laughs> Kim, why ain't I on the praise and worship team? Number one, you sing off key, you don't come on time, and you won't learn the song. There you go. Three strikes, you're out. Pastor Court, why can't I have keys to the church? You don't come to service. Come on. I know that's right. Why Carvin get to start a Bible study? Because he has a zeal to do the work of the Lord. And all you want to do is be seen and be heard. And we don't need that that's here. Right. That's right. We need YPWW. That's it. Old people, WW. You, <laughs> you want to come on when the lights are on and the mics are hot. That's not it, baby. I ain't ever transgressed against you, Daddy. Read. And yet thou never gavest me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. Uh huh. But as soon as this thy son was as come. As soon as this nappy head Negro shows back up here, what do you do? Which hath devoured the living. He, he spent. Wait, 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 wait. Well, okay, read, because there's a, there's, a, there's a revelation in here. Read. Which devoured the living with harlots. Oh, oh wait. Wait, wait, wait. Did you read that wrong, Kim? No. What did it say? That has devoured thy living with harlots. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let's put a pin in that and let's, let's, let's peel this thing back. Jay, did they not say at the beginning of this scripture that he went to a far land? Did I sneak and put that in your Bible or did, 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 did it say he went purposefully out of town. Uh -huh. But here it is, Carvin, that his brother goes and snitches him out. Pastor Court, you, you, you do know that he was going to the whole house, don't you? Well, how do you know where he was if you wasn't where he was? See, there's some folk that are bold enough to go on out and get their party on. But as some of us who have learned the science of I can only party on Saturday night, I can go out and do my dirt Thursday and Friday, feel bad about it on Saturday, and get back in the choir stand or the pulpit on Sunday. God help me. My question would have been, how you know what he was doing? You just testified that you've been here and ain't went nowhere. But yet you know everything he did. He was in the whole house. He was spending his money. He was gambling. How do you know what he did and where he did it unless you were out there yourself? And that is the problem with us. We quick to snitch on everybody else. But my sin is a pet. You can cast that out, but you can't cast this out, Lord. No, no, no that one got to stay. And if you can hide from me, you cannot hide from God. I was reading that, and it just, it, you know, I'm, I'm very, 
I don't even know, cartoonish. When I read and study, I see visuals. So I saw this big bubble gum. Big D is like, wait a minute. How did he know what his brother was doing? Because it didn't say, like some of us say, they told me. See, by, 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 just, just a question, because I'm, 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 this is just who I am. This is how I do. Brother Carvin, who do you want to talk to when you get to heaven? God and family. Kim, who you want to talk to when you get to heaven? Uh, Kalisa, who you want to talk to when you get to heaven? Okay, cool. And E, okay. Sister Karoma, who you want to talk to when you get to heaven? You want to talk to Jesus? Weaver, who you want to talk to when you get to heaven? Just Jesus. Well, see, Jay, who you want to talk to when you get to heaven? Jesus, your dad, and David. The first person I want to talk to, Deanna, when I get to heaven is they. Because they know everybody's business. They can tell you what everybody said. They was where you was. They know all your business. And they tell everybody else, and I have never met they. Anybody in here ever been accosted by they, just by show of hands, they said? Kim, they said. Lisa, they said. Missionary, they said. L, they said. But I have yet to meet they. So if they don't go to hell, they is the first person I want to meet because I know my, I know all them, I know all my folk. I have an idea. I may, I mean, his complexion may not be what I've always seen, and I'm, I'm, I'm leery of that, but I know who Jesus is. But I just want to meet they. Because this scripture did not say they said. He's telling in first person. Read, Kim. Which hath devoured thy living with harlots. Uh-huh. Thou hast, ca- thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. Uh-huh. And he said unto him. He said to him. Son, thou art ever with me. You always hear. And all that I have is thine. You, 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 oh, you have always had audience with me. It was met that we should make merry uh-huh. and be glad. Could it be stopped that the son never asked for a party uh-huh. because he knew how he was really living, even uh-huh. though his daddy never confronted him? Uh-huh. Sometimes we come to church and we feel unworthy. Uh-huh. We, we bust on the altar crying, oh, oh God, help, help, help. God said, I, I knew you were going to do it before you did it. Right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Can I, can, I, can I just go ahead and put another religious cow on the grill since I'm already out here? I need for y'all to quit talking about the power of generational curses and start acknowledging the power of decision. Well, it's what my daddy did. He had a choice, and so do you. Because the word of God says... There is no temptation that comes upon you that you did not have the ability to get out of. And and, and what what did Flip Wilson say that we have taken in as doctrine? The devil made me do it. The devil is a lie. Because for everything that you are tempted with, he says, I've already provided a way of escape. You didn't have to keep calling. What you doing? I'm watching TV. Don't go over there. It's going to be trouble. What you doing? I'm just watching. I'm, I'm Netflixing and chilling all by myself. Well, you want me to come over? No, nah, because if you come over, you know what's going to happen. Well, you know, it, it ain't going to happen this time. Okay, I'm on my way. <laughs> See, the problem with us is we have made our convenience more powerful than our conviction. Mom, we, 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 we just, uh, you know what? I'm going to take her to dinner at such and such a place that saves my favorite meal, but because I'm not eating that no more, I'm not going to eat it. And then we get there. Well, they didn't have anything else on the menu. You knew what was on the menu <laughs> before you got there. In fact, you got the menu on your phone, on your tablet, and committed to memory. 
you know doggone well they ain't got no key, 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 with a keto on their menu nowhere. Go ahead and just give me the burger then. I, well, honey, you know, I, I guess I just, I just, no, you ain't just got to do nothing. You don't just have to make the call. Well, they called and I need to call. No, you don't. No, because that's quick saying. And see, the thing about God, his grace does extend beyond our sin. But there comes a time when he says enough is enough. That's right. You never had a party because you never felt worthy of a party because even though you were in the house, you were sneaking out of the house. I, I, I'm kind of stuck there, but let's move on, Kim. Go, 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 go. For go. this thy brother was dead uh -huh. and is alive again uh -huh. and was lost and is found. Uh -huh. So here we have this brother who's coming in the house. He's coming back. But the problem is not his indiscretion. It's his brother's secret hate. Then how many of us are angry at our brother or our sister simply because of the call of God that is on their life? And you know what we'll do? We'll sit down. We'll nitpick. Well, I do this better than Curtis. I can sing better than Curtis. I'm just using me. I'm not, I'm not putting myself down. Trust and believe I ain't putting myself in that position. But I can do this better than him. I can sing better than Kim. I can preach better than Court. I can prophesy better than Carmen. But why isn't God using me? Because your heart is not right. And, and you, 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 you know the thing. It, it's, it's like coronavirus of the spirit. Lisa, when we went to that church that day, <coughs> it was all good. Until we got around people who were contaminated. <clears throat> I told you earlier, I'm going to say ask your neighbor, but I'm really telling you to tell yourself, but in order to keep you from looking crazy, you will ask somebody else. So ask your neighbor, are you contaminated? Because see, when we ask ourselves, we have to give a response. Because, see, your neighbor felt obligated. No, nah, girl, I ain't no nah, child, no. Nah. I've been vaccinated and boosted. But are you contaminated? Do you spread vile about your brother and sister, the ones who are coming in, the ones who are turning that corner and coming back? Girl, don't let him be around your, don't let her be around your husband. You know she did such and such. I don't trust her. Bro, he can't hang around us. He kind of soft, and we don't want people to think. You know, they said they were doing such and such. But if this is the church of the living God, there's enough love in here. That it, it, it's, it's, we, we have our own remedy for sickness and sin. And you know what it is? It's love. We need to experience that more and more. If I don't see you all week, I, I need you to break my neck when you see me if you love me. I got one of the Weaver boys. I don't care what I'm doing. Every week he makes his way up to give me my hug. Every week. Every week. And you know, he said, I miss you. And I'm like, wow. I didn't even know I was on his radar like that. He'll remind me what I had on a couple Sundays and I like this that you had on. Because they pay attention. And what if, what if we gave that close a detail to one another? I noticed that Missionary Younger parked over here today. I felt bad because I thought I might have been in their spot. So I told Jerry, hey, man, have her take my spot. I got to leave. But when you notice the small things, learn, we, we have to learn how to begin to compliment one another and stop complaining so much. Oh, you preach long, but you, but you live through it. When are we going to get a children's church? We dealt with your little beautiful babies. <laughs> I 
We need some real musicians. The Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Because you, you know where most of musicians, especially our black folk, let me just put it where we can get it, started all that, right up here. And then we started taking it for granted. I need you to be at this service, this service, this service, this service, this service, this service, da 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 and are offering them nothing for it. God will make a way. Yeah, he's going to make a way, all right. I'm going to be on that road, playing behind somebody, talking about shaking your booty. And then you're going to be talking about I ain't saved no more. Because when I was in the house, I was taken for granted. We should make a charge that I won't take any. Uh, look, uh, do do this. Tell your neighbor, I ain't going to take you for granted no more. <laughs> we we going to look now, 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 now. Because I know how we are, because I've been black my whole life. We're going to let bygones be bygones. I ain't going to take you for granted no more. I'm not going to look at my brother and sister starting from the day forward that I may have looked at them yesterday. We ain't going to get together and talk about nobody no more. Oh, we've been guilty of it. I, I, again, I'm just, I've been guilty of it. I'll make some I statements. I've been guilty of it, Carvin. Whew, boy, have I been guilty of it. Teresa didn't get on my long ass nerves. Well, guess what, bruh? You get on some people's nerves, too. Everybody, you ain't everybody's cup of tea. Hello? Everybody don't like your cooking. Everybody don't like your attitude. Everybody, some people just really tolerate you. Imagine that. As perfect as you are, some people only tolerate you and can't wait to get in their car. Ooh, girl, child, man, did, ooh, Lord, they make me itch. And you think you missed a wonderful. But it changes from the inside. It changes from the inside. So when we see our brothers coming, we'll run out, do like daddy did. Man, I'm so glad you're back. I missed you. I was really in a couple of the places that you were. I'm just glad you didn't see me, but I'm so glad that you are home now. Some of my struggles are the same struggles that you have. Yours were just broadcast, and God protected me. Oh, there has been plenty of time. Oh, God. Lord, just don't let them know what I'm doing. Just let me get back Say, I'm not turning around now. Don't let me die while I'm out there, but please let me get back with all my senses intact. Y'all, y'all, that's just me. I'm just talking about me. Lord, there, there, there are times I've been prodigal. I've, 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 I've preached prodigal, Jay. I've sang prodigal. I've traveled the country prodigal. And as God, God, just please don't let your grace leave me. And the reason I won't take grace from anybody else is because, God, I've been there know it. Oh, I, got the, I ain't got a shirt. I got a tattoo that proved, Lord, I was there. So nothing that you tell me, Mimi, is going to blow my wig off. Gotcha, girl. Been there, done that. <clears throat> but it is time for us as the body of Christ to take the attitude that, Lord, send them in to this church because we'll love them. We may not know how to properly set an eight-course meal, but look, we'll sit down with a bag of chips and a hamburger and just call it a day, and they can feel the love. You know how it is when we go to church banquets. They got all that stuff that we don't know how to use. We're using the, the, the dinner fork for the salad. And what I need all these glasses for, put my water in this one. When I'm done with that, put my drink in this one. I don't drink coffee, so you can have that one back. Why I got two Little bitty, oh, that's what, the, I just put my salad on my plate. We may not have all the etiquette, but as long as we have the love, oh, the fruit will remain. The fruit will remain, baby. If we got the love, the fruit will remain. But it starts with this surgery from the inside. And the thing, we can't do surgery on ourselves. But what God will do, he'll, he'll open our chest and show us our ugly. And the beautiful thing about it, and I'm finishing here, is that God will show us us. And it's not an indictment about what they did to us. It's simply, I'm going to show you your ugly so that you can repair it. Social media has gone buck wild. 
Africa, I, I say it like this. You can disagree with me if you want to. But they show some ugly folk, Lisa, putting on makeup. And when they done, they look like a shiny dime. But oh my God. And Jerry, they go from oh my God to gorgeous. And that's exactly what God is doing with us. He's taking us from my, oh my God ugly to gorgeous. To where I can't see nothing but Jesus on you. I don't know if you're dark skinned or light skinned. I don't know if you're fat or skinny. I don't know if you're rich or poor. But what I do see, I see Jesus in you. Big D, that's the transformation that's coming to the body of Christ. It's not political. It's not racial. It's a transformation. And if any of you today are ready for that transformation, I want you just to come to the altar. Lord, I, 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 want, I want that change. I need that change. I thought I was good, but Lord, I, I really am not as good as I thought I was. It's not an indictment. Because God is going to deal with all of us. And if you hide from him privately, he will drag you publicly. Because the Bible declares that pride precedes a fall. But those who come to him with a broken and contrite spirit, he delights in it. Because we say, Lord, I'm, I'm messed up. I'm toe up from the flow up, and I really need your help. I need the oil. I need thee. To workers to come, Kim, Clarissa, Deanna, Elder Weaver, Elder Carvin, and before I want you to put oil in their hands. Put oil in their hands, yes. And we are going to touch. We're going to touch and agree with you. So as you lay hands on yourself. We are going to lay hands on you. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says if any two, three are gathered, as touching, but agree, there's nothing that he won't break. Come on, lay hands on them who are on the altar. Hallelujah. Father, it is in the name of Jesus that we decree and de we declare. Come on, Lisa. Pray. We thank you, God. We thank you that every yoke is broken. Every yoke is destroyed. Hallelujah. We thank you that no weapon formed against us 
shall be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against us, oh God, we condemn it now. We pray, God, for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. Give us strength in our weak areas. Give us strength in the areas where we're struggling. <clears throat> Those things that we're not so readily ready to give up, God, help us to turn. Help us to turn, God. Help us to turn toward you, to repent, and to go in another direction, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just give you glory and honor. We thank you that all, that all, that all of Satan's powers are broken. In the name of Jesus. We thank you that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. And now in the name of Jesus, it's condemned. It's condemned. There's an out of order sign put on it. There's a no occupancy sign put up there. There's a no trespassing sign put up there, God. And we thank you. And we glorify you, God, for who you are, for what you've said and for what you've done. And we rejoice at your word because we have found great spoil. Now, God, carry us through this day and through this week full of your power, full of your anointing, full of your strength. Let us be an encouragement to one another. Let us not ever from this day forward take each other for granted. And God, we'll be careful to bless you for all things. In Jesus' name, now clap your hands and give God a praise. And give God a, come on, come on, give him a real praise. Come on, give him a real praise. Hallelujah. 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 I come to 